Hey everyone, I am Melinda Rayline, and I am so excited to be here with my very dear friend and fellow colleague in the film industry, Alder Sherwood. I'll go ahead and let you say hello. And we are here today to walk you through what might seem kind of a, a huge task of this unemployment. We're gonna to try to help you navigate and show you it isn't as hard as you might think it is. And um, yeah, we're excited. Alder? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and start and I'm gonna share my desktop real quick. Share. And I want to start by saying I'm a newbie to this. Uh, Melinda gave me the information and I looked at the website, you know, every all these links and resources for I'd say a few hours and it might seem overwhelming, but there's great resources out there available for us. So I was pretty excited when she shared all this with me. So I'll try to relay the same thing to you guys. So here it is. So this is going to be about the pandemic unemployment. So this is for creatives. Uh, I like to say gig workers. I've heard that term lately and that's kind of fun. Um, and all the filmmakers, self-employed contracting and freelance work. So in this, these few slides that I'm sharing will just be the resources. So there's a lot out there available, but I think it's really, really coherent and easy to follow. So the first slide here, um, this was an email sent uh, by Washington Filmworks, and it gives a bunch of information about the CARES Act, which is, uh, came out. It gives a ton of uh, resources, websites, all this information available when you're going through the process of applying for unemployment or also the extra resources available. And so I'll just go over here. Okay, so to get on this newsletter, you're going to go to the WashingtonFrameworks.org website and you just click news here and subscribe. And that brings up a little uh, handy dandy little fill in here. And I, I went ahead and did that today because I wasn't subscribed. So, uh, and I already got information. So. Okay. And if you want to chime in, Melinda, with anything. <laughs> no, you are doing great. You are a pro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting to be. I mean, there's so much available. So um, once you get on the, the website, you're going to see a ton of things. There's uh, links there available. There's all sorts of information about all the resources available for creatives. I just want to go back over here because I just found this really good. So there's this um, on the Washington Filmworks website, there's this whole uh, sheet available, this document, and I went through a bunch of these. You know, it's, uh, it's very clear. They do say to keep checking back because things in this current landscape are changing so much and information is changing, so I'd recommend going back and seeing the updates, you know, changes I'm seeing daily, you know, there's different stuff out there. So, um, I mean, all these websites, let's see this one, um, the ESD's Guide for Expanded Benefits, that one's really, really um, informative. So going back over here, try to go quickly through this. Um, this is the new newsletter with WhipSmart, and that also has a bunch of information available. Uh, there's links available on there. I'm just kind of going through this again. There's a local blog on the website um, with the CARES Act notable, notable benefits for arts and entertainment workers. So this is going to give you a lot of information on uh, what benefits are available, which I did not know before. So there's um, quite a bit that were added with the CARES Act. Okay, there's this another website available um, for the organization Artist Trust. It's artisttrust.org and they have webinars available. They also have the links to the webinars. So you could watch them after they've already, if you missed it. 
Um, this website is great. Going back over here. So they have a ton of stuff there with the resources for COVID-19. I also like this page because it did talk about some grants available, but they've been shifting their focus during this time. Um, so the, it's the Artist Trust Relief Fund. So that's worth looking into. Um, excuse me, back and forth. Okay. Um, oh, and also on this one, they also, on this webinar, um, they also had the Unemployment Law Project um, talk on that to give um, the details of the law that's available. So this is their website, unemploymentlawproject.org, and this will give you kind of uh, more details. And you can ask questions, which is um, really nice. Okay, so this is the um, Employment Security Department website, um, esd.wa.gov forward slash unemployment. And here uh, it shows you with that red arrow where you can subscribe to the updates. And that's really nice because you can get information available on how to um, apply for unemployment. Um, it's actually a pretty nice website, and I think Melinda is going to go over more later. But, um, and this, when you do subscribe on there, um, you'll get a newsletter, and this is that newsletter. And right here in the newsletter, you can join a webinar. So there's information there. I mean, I was sitting there this morning, and I just clicked on some things, some nine-minute videos, and they're really helpful. So um, anyway, this is all the, the resources and links to get you started. Thanks, Alder. Sure. You did an awesome job. <laughs> um, I really appreciate you joining on board on this. If, um, so now we're going to go, and I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to go actually into um, starting to file for unemployment insurance. Um, So, um, website is right here, esd.wa.gov. And then when you get onto the website, um, this is what it will look like. And I really encourage you before going onto this website to check out the various resources that Alder mentioned to you. I find I found them to be very helpful and I, I took my time and even taking my time, I messed up. <laughs> I messed up pretty big. Um, so that don't stress if it does happen and you do mess up, there is opportunities and we'll go over that and how to um, submit documents send them in email communication. And uh, I know for myself personally, I was a little bit on nerve um, filling this out. But like Alder shared with you, there's a lot of resources and there's people that you can talk to. And I know Washington Filmworks has been so great and supportive when I had questions and I reached out to them along with Artist Trust. And um, you're not alone in this. There's a lot of us out there that have um, had to fill out unemployment for the very first time. And um, it, they say it's gonna take about anywhere from <laughs> 10 to 60 minutes of your time, I would um, lean towards the longer end. And what took me a lot of time is actually more so my prep work. So downloading all my documents, showing um, payment um, that I received in 2019, because I there's a spot for us to upload all of that, and we'll get to that. Um, but this is basically what the first page looks like when you get on there. And what you're gonna wanna click onto is um, new to unemployment. And even on this site, there's a lot of resources for you as well. And um, you'll go to self-employed and independent contractor and you, to learn more and to um, look into their resources. And I would highly encourage you to do that as well. Um, and then this is what that page looks like. Um, it goes into more detail about um, 
self-employed and independent contractor, this is where Alders shared with you about getting updates and newsletters from them. And then further down on this page, there is information on how to apply, like a checklist, download a guide, and then a checklist for um, unemployment benefits for pandemic unemployment assistance. So that would be considered ourselves, the gig workers, the contract workers, freelancers. Um, we also do want to apply for regular unemployment first, and then, and then most likely you'll get denied, and that is that's the case that's for most everybody. And then you'll go and apply for the pandemic unemployment. I myself had to do that. There is a video down here, a tutorial. I highly recommend you watch it. I think it's less than ten minutes. I found it very useful and helpful. One of the things they talk about is that. When you enter in your social security number, um, when you're signing up, you also have to make sure that your name is written and spelled exactly the way it is on your card. So that was one good information I found on that video amongst others. And this is just what the expanded pandemic unemployment benefits guide looks like. There's a couple of things I wanna highlight within this packet. Um, one of the first things is standby and because of the current situation we're in right now, there is, we can check no on standby. And again, you'll see this throughout the presentation. Another thing is um, able, and, able and available to work for all of those who are, you should um, hit yes on there, even though you are saying no on standby. Um, and then this is just a little bit of information on, the um, expanded benefit application that I wanted to highlight. Um, and that is when you get denied on regular unemployment, there will be this option to apply for the COVID-19 PUA claim, and you'll definitely want to click onto that. Um, and claims. So you'll see this. You, every week you'll want to um, submit your claims and um, I'll walk you through that, but it's very important that you submit your claims in order to get paid. And in the section of when you submit your claims, um, as of now, because of the pandemic, it is okay to check no in searching for jobs. And this is just a checklist, um, unemployment checklist that would be helpful for you to look at prior to applying. And then this is the expanded pandemic unemployment benefits. And these are just some things that I highlighted that I felt were important um, and that, you know, for you to look at eligibility for expanded unemployment benefits would be great for you to look at. Um, you know, requirements, looking for work. Again, like I said, you don't have to look for work because um, we are in a pandemic. Um, some other things is, um, when you apply, again, you apply for regular unemployment and then you'll apply for the pandemic unemployment. When you apply for the pandemic unemployment as of April 18th, you automatically shall receive $600 each week um, in your benefits. And this starts from March 29th through July 25th. Um, you don't have to fill anything out extra. It would, you'll automatically do it when you fill out your second unemployment um, link. And then again, submit your weekly claims right away. And um, there'll be a section for you to do that and I'll, I'll walk you through that. This is the video that I was telling you about. If you click on there and um, pops up, that's nine minutes long. And now we're gonna get into applying. So you're going to go into new to unemployment and you'll click here, start here unless for some reason you've already applied for unemployment before and there's history on you. And if so, then you would log into that um, onto the right side. And then you'll want to check just in case I checked and saw, in fact, I did have a SAW account. And um, in order you know, to do that, you would enter in the username. If you don't remember your password, you can click that and it can send you an email. That's what I had to do or enter the password in and see if you do have a SAW account. And then you're going to go up to apply for unemployment benefits. Um, and then this is again where you'll go to manage your current and past claims. And then you'll want to read through everything carefully. Like I 
messed up and I thought I read through everything. So please read through everything. There's another kind of checkpoint at the end before you get done. Um, and then this talks about unemployment benefits. So don't worry about it if you qualify for that or not. You really just, you wanna fill out the regular unemployment so that you can then get access to the pandemic unemployment. And then you're just gonna click here that you agree with everything and then hit next. And then you'll go in here and then this is um, where you'll fill out your personal information, date of birth, um, name again as it appears on your social security card the way it appears with your first name last name and middle name and um, there's just information um, if you've used an, um, other names for work such as your maiden name and they talked about this in the tutorial it's only for the last 12 months so um, as a reference and then do you have any nicknames and then are you a US citizen or, or American national? And this is where I messed up and I said, no, <laughs> and I missed it. <laughs> so anyways, um, I'll explain how I fixed that. But um, also down here is you want to save, just every time you fill out a page, save it, especially if you are filling out your application during the peak hours. I filled mine out late at night, starting around um, midnight probably why I missed a question, but um, so just save every time you hit a page or every time you're uploading information, save it. And then enter your, in your driver's license, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, benefits, are you receiving benefits or did you apply for benefits um, other than Washington State in the last 12 months? Yes or no. Um, were you injured on the job? Yes or no. And up here, we'll go, um, up here, you'll see at the very top, it's how far along you are on the process of completing your applications, kind of a nice little reference. Um, oh, and the other one was if you're federal employed, are you military job, so yes or no. Um, did you work in any other states in the last 18 months? Yes or no. And then this is the part with your claim date you you'll list the date so we'll typically list the date you're applying for so um, um it said or excuse me i think it, it's listing april 19th so the day after they uploaded the cares act into the system and mine actually started sooner or earlier and so i had to adjust it in which you can do and so i hit no and then when you hit no this is what comes up i entered in the date and then it's you know i said yes and just ironically that um, my start date was um, the last, the soonest start date that you could have applied for. And then, you know, anti-harassment order out on you, yes or no. And then this is the contact information page that you'll want to fill out. Important thing right here is that you want to hit please confirm address because it'll give you, um, It'll list two addresses, one how you type it and one how they see it, and you'll want to put the one that they provide if it is, in fact, correct. And then, um, you know, is this where you receive your physical, you know, is this your physical mailing address, yes or no? And then I signed up for sending me e-services information, so I get emails daily, and it's really great because it's a way that I can communicate back to them, too, and, but that's completely up to you and your option. There is a spot for you to put your email address your phone number, and then, you know, do they have permission to leave you a detailed voice message, yes or no? And then if you wanna leave an additional number. And um, on here is personal information, so you're in ethnicity. Um, and then, you know, just FYI, this is volunteer, so you don't necessarily have to put that information in if you don't want to. Um, did you work for a Washington employer? So. You know, it can be confusing because as gig workers, freelance workers, uh, we might be doing work for um, a Washington employer, but we are actually considered self, you know, we're self-employed. So we are employing ourselves then contracting out to someone else. So um, myself as a freelancer, I put no, and I, you know, I do, I work on photo shoots and also in film and um, with wardrobe. Besides. Um, making my own films so um, and then um, on here this is you know talks about alternative base years uh, do we have the permission to use alternative base years I said yes and 
Um, normally, if you are employed in, with an employer, Washington State, you'll enter in that information, it'll pull up an employer for you, and then the employer would have populated the hours and the wages that um, you had worked for them. But since we are gig workers, contract workers, we are most likely not gonna have this. I did not have this, so don't freak out about that. Um, continue on, you know, like I said, I do wardrobe styling on photo shoots and I had to search occupation. They didn't quite um, have something as a wardrobe stylist, but they had a costume assistant or attendant. And so I clicked on that. Um, and then, you know, are you a member, a union member or not? And then um, part-time work. So part-time work is usually 17 hours or fewer per week. So, you know, you decide if, it, if that's a yes or no for you. And then, um, again, this is that question about standby. As of right now, we can click no for standby because we are in, in the midst of the COVID-19. And then, you know, are you in school or training? Yes or no? Um, and then this is that part, able and available for work. I am, so I clicked yes. If you're not, you know, click no. A lot of us are, so we just wanna you know, make sure the answer reflects your um, current situation. And then do you want federal taxes withheld? I said yes, but that's up to you. Yes or no for yourself. Um, and then how do you want to get paid? And this is where you fill out, you know, I did direct deposit, so you'll end up needing to make sure you have your um, banking information, your routing number, and the account number um, on file. Or you can do this debit card, and they go into more details about the debit card. And then this is claim summary, so please, please, please double check. Don't do the oops like I did. <laughs> um, I hope you out. And so this is, whoops, go back. So this is what I got when I was denied. And you see down at the bottom, um, it has um, ineligible and up here is where to apply for COVID-19 PUA claim. So you would click on that and a lot of the information I went over with you is gonna be the same. I'm just gonna go over the things that were slightly different and um, this covers like, you know, you want to answer yes or no to this. Did any of these apply to you as far as why you're applying? And then there's some other questions, again, like the start date, you know, um, do, you, do, you, do you normally work full time, yes or no? And then how many hours per week um, do you work? And the way I did it is I took my four quarters, added up the hours, divided it by four and came out. Um, that divided it by four and then divided it by the months and weeks. Yeah, so I did some math calculations on how to come up with that. I probably was a little more detailed than necessary, but um, you just want to be able to make sure to account for the hours that you work. And then in here for um, self-employment, um, you know, you want to answer the questions did you earn money as an independent contractor um, in the tax year of 2019? And yes, I did. So, and I'm assuming that's the case with most of us. And you hit enter. And then um, in here you want to, this is the part where you want to fill out your earnings for each of the quarters. And that's where it took me the longest time. And a lot of what Alder went over with you and those resources, they explained for you and how to do this. There's some steps to walk you through. And then there's a section to upload documents. You want to upload as much documentation to support the earnings you're claiming. And so then this is what it looks like for me. And then this is what took me the most amount of time. And I try to make it as very clear and simple to um, Washington State as possible. So I put the date in front and then the um, contractor that I work with and what's this kind of payment. And then again, you know, I just put in the description, there's a description field client payment voucher for direct deposit on such and such date, and then uploaded um, that document. And you literally have to upload one at a time. So on this page, it's really, really important to save your information. And then again, you know, you'll continue answering some of the same questions, and then we come to the standby question. Again, say no, you, you know, on standby. Um, 
I mean, if you're available to work, you, you know, you want to put yes. If you're not, then hit no. And then summary, and then make sure review, and then hit submit. And then this will um, give you a confirmation that they've received your information. And here it is on this page. You know, it told me immediately after I was done filling out what my dollar amount was. I was shocked because I was like, whoa, that's a lot less than what I expected. It didn't um, allocate the $600 in that amount. Um, so give it time. It took them about a day for them to be able to review all my documents that I um, had submitted to them. And I even just uploaded. So this is a section where you can upload documents where I uploaded the information on my 1099. I didn't do it at that time and, and forgot to do it. So I uploaded it here. And um, like I said, I accidentally said that I wasn't a U.S. citizen. So I had to upload proof that I was my passport. And you could do that up here as well. And then um, this is where you go in to kind of check your status. Say it's the next day and you just log back in. And then, you know, it says, you know, manage your current and past accounts, same line as you did to apply for benefits. And then, um, like I said, this is the part where you can message and ask questions, upload documents if you need to. And then it gives me notification when I need to do my weekly claim, if I have a weekly claim. So we're gonna just go into that really quick. And they reiterate this a number of times. So if you're not yet approved, you still want to do your weekly claims for every week that you want to get paid. And then these were my claims that I needed to do. I did them immediately the next day. And I actually got my payment. I think I did. I applied for this on or late, late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. And submitted all my claims later on Wednesday day. And then on Thursday, I got my payment, which was nice. And again, this just kind of, you know, telling you what claim you're um, submitting. And then um, again, this part is about, you know, are you physical and able to work? I am, so I hit yes. And then am I searching for jobs? At this time, I am not, and that is not gonna hinder you. I put no. And then, um, so I, you know, click no here. And then again, these are just, it was done. It gave me options again. It'll pull me back to the screen. If I want to send messages, upload documents. And that's pretty much it. I know it's like, seems like a lot of information, but um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. But yeah. That's pretty much all I have. I know it was a, kind of a, a lot, um, but it's, I found that it was well worth it to get as much information ahead of time. And um, it ended up making my process a lot smoother. And like I said, I got the deposit in my account Thursday. And um, I know that there's other people out there that are having some problems and some struggles. And, um, you know, my heart goes out to them. Um, don't stress if, if you've messed up because there's opportunities for you to um, send them messages. Try to call them early, early in the morning as possible. And um, yeah, we're going to get through this. Um, I know this is a crazy, unusual time, but hang in there. I, I've seen so much beauty in our community and so much support through this. And I'm grateful to be a part of this community in Washington State. And um, I hope that helps. Alder, you, my friend. Well, I just wanted to say thanks for preparing all this, Melinda. Um, I know it was really confusing for me, and it, this is really helpful. I know as artists, if we can come together and help each other out and share, I think this could be a time of growth for I agree. all of us. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Be Bye. safe. Enjoy this crazy time. It will be something that we'll be able to talk about. To, for years to come. So, and thanks all there for joining me on this.